You're listening to LCC Alumni Stories, a show dedicated to highlighting the amazing alumni of Lansing Community College. I'm Steve Robinson, president of LCC, and on each episode, I have the awesome privilege of getting to know one of our many inspiring alums and hearing about their experiences at and since leaving LCC. The LCC alumni community is expansive and far-reaching. They're an incredibly diverse group of people, representative of all the walks of life, working in hundreds of industries across the country. LCC Alumni Stories shines a bright light on alumni who make positive contributions to their communities and showcases those who overcome obstacles and barriers to achieve academic and personal success. These are their dynamic stories. My guest today is Rick Hamilton, a 1990 graduate of LCC who earned his associate's degree in aviation technology. He's currently the CEO of Blue Planet Software. Rick, it's great to have you on the show. Yeah, Steve, great. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And, you know, before we talk about your time here at LCC, your degree and your field have taken you all over the world. I would love to hear about what you do at Blue Planet and your background and experience in aviation. Tell me uh, what you're doing right now. Sure. Right now... Uh, Blue Planet Software, we write uh, AI software for all the large carriers around the world. So think AT&T, uh, Comcast, all of those kind of network providers around the world. We, we, we write software for them that helps them automate their, their networks. Okay, and AI is artificial <clears throat> intelligence. Artificial intelligence, right. So right, can, can you tell me a little bit about what this software does for these giant companies? Well, the best way to describe it, it can get a little bit geeky, I guess, is mm-hmm. you know they have very large networks that have a bunch of different domains and segments, and that, that takes a lot of people to run, uh-huh. to configure them, to make sure they're running properly, capacity, throughput, route paths. So we, we write software that gives them intelligent ways to manage that so they can do it machine to machine instead of having people running those networks. Got it. So instead of having real humans doing switching or connecting these systems, you write software that helps these systems work together. That's exactly right. For for example, if if you're a cable provider, we know that traffic at a certain point of the day is a heck of a lot higher than it is at other points of the day. So we help them shift their networks around in real time so that you get the best experience you can have from, from their networks and they don't have to hire people to do that work. Well, and some of those some of those tasks are probably better done by software than people. It's not just a function of replacing people, but the software uh, knows more and can do it faster probably. Yeah, and it's, you know, the the heart of machine to machine learning is that a machine talking to a machine can do it better than a a human talking to a machine, so that, that's for sure. I find that fascinating. So, Blue Planet, you're um, headquartered in Detroit. No, I just live in Detroit. Our headquarters is actually in Baltimore, Maryland. Okay, okay. so the the headquarters are in Baltimore, but yep. you live you live back here in Michigan. But you haven't always done software, right? You had a career in aviation. Tell me a little bit about this career that took you all over the world. Yeah, I started, uh, well, actually, when I graduated here, I was doing what everybody does. I got all my certifications, and I was a flight instructor, and Got a cargo job in California. I moved to California to fly airplanes mm-hmm. for a living. But uh, we can talk about it later. I actually learned a lot here about computers and computer science. Oh, I can't wait to hear. Yeah, and so my hobby was writing software, and my, my profession was flying airplanes. But in the early 90s, you know, flying airplanes was not the most lucrative career in the world. Okay. And uh, I don't know. It just happened one day. Hobby became a career, and career became a hobby. So that, that started you know, this movement around the world. So I lived in, boy, I was in California for almost 10 years. I lived in Hong Kong and Singapore for three. I just came back from Europe. I was there for 10 years. So that's mostly been technology related. Those so times. so I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the, the time period here. So your hobby, then hobby of, of coding and computer software, right, be, became so much more marketable and the demand probably went through the roof. Oh, yeah. It was crazy. I mean, I, I did a special project for a small company out there. I had a friend that worked there. He said, can you help us with this problem? I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. I know this. I know how to do this work. We can talk about that later. It's on a platform called an AS400, which the college here used to run, and I got to spend a bunch of time with. I learned RPG here at LCC, so I said, I know RPG, and I know the AS400. I can solve this problem for you. And literally, I did that twice, and at the end of the week, I got a paycheck, and it was more money than I'd made two months flying. So all of a sudden, it's like, whoa, this is this is something very interesting, and I can still fly, and I can make a better living, and it's just the way it went. So that's fascinating to me. It sounds like you learned how to fly in multiple ways here yeah. at LCC, <laughs> right? You know, literally fly, but also fly with your career. That's maybe a great way to pivot back to 
the time you studied? Did you uh, did you grow up around here? Well, how did you how how did you get to LCC? I did. I grew up just north of here, small little farming town called Fowler. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I come from a fairly big family. I have five brothers, and um, you know, access to uh, big universities was a problem financially. Uh-huh. Uh, but but I knew I wanted to fly airplanes, and at that time. LCC had one of the foremost flight schools in the country, in fact. I don't right. know if you remember those days, but it was one of the best flight schools around. Uh, so yeah, so I wound up getting a job here and, uh, you know, entering school here. I did a couple courses my last year of high school. So you started the, the, on this flight training in aviation while you were in high school yeah. in Fowler, right? And, yep. but, and obviously the flight program is what attracted you to LCC. Yep. You came here and you eventually earned that associate degree. Um so you, you did the flight training, but you also worked here, didn't I, you? I did. Yeah, tell me about your experience doing that. Yeah, it was great, actually. I, um, You know, when I first came to school, figuring out how to pay for everything was a big challenge because, you know, flight school, we had you – know, LCC was still is, but it was very affordable to go to basic classes. Right. But I had to fly airplanes, so the lab fees were, were pretty big. So they I to, can be, yeah. They can be, and I had to work. Uh, so as part of my student aid package, uh, the college offered me a job, and I worked over in uh, a building just across from here, business services. Right. Uh, Nineteen at the end of eighty nine, I guess I was a mail guy. So it was a great job because I was delivering mail all over the campus, and I got to meet everybody. It was uh, it was really really a great way to start. So you worked in the mail room. That is a, like an room. iconic yeah. first job. It was right? a cliche in... thing, right? No, it's awesome. And, <laughs> and so you worked in that. And I think that that building you're talking about, the one you uh, worked in, is no longer there. Yeah. Right. But it got you all over campus. And so did you work the entire time you were studying here? Yeah, I did. I worked. Uh, I took mostly night classes out at the airport. Right, because at that time, our listeners would remember in the in the 80s and the 90s, the flight program was at Capital City that's Airport, right. Right? That's right? That's where we had that. So you were you were working here at the downtown campus, heading out to the airport to take classes. That's right. That's right. Yep. So um, did you start flying right when you right when you graduated? I did. I, I, I took a small internship with a school as mm-hmm. a flight instructor. And okay. two months later, I got offered a job in California. So Packed up my little car and off to California I went. So. so you were flying cargo and then also training pilots? Yep, training pilots out of Burbank and uh, flew for a company called Amflight. But back in those days, the cargo was canceled checks. You, you, you probably remember checks. Everybody wrote checks and, I the, do. and the banks had to move them around physically. So I had a route that was just nothing but mail bags full of checks, and I would fly to four airports every day and back to Burbank, and that was a year, year and a half of work for me. I never even thought about it. Of course I know about checks, but it didn't occur to me that they had to get from bank to bank and place to place. So you literally were yep. putting them in airplanes and flying them between yep. banks. Yep. You leave one airport, two bags would go off. Get to that airport, two bags would come on. It was the same thing over and over. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. So you did that in California, but it sounds like you got some other non-aviation skills here at LCC that later came in handy out there in, in California about the dot-com yeah, boom era, right, right? right? Tell me about that. What did you study having to do with computers here? Well, I didn't really study. It was part of the job. So I worked over in business services. Mm-hmm. I started in the mailroom, and there was another group over there that did office supplies. Okay. So we delivered paper and pens and everything to every department here on the campus. And the system that the school used to handle the ordering and all of that internally was all done on an AS400. And of course, with my mail job, I got to know the guys over in the MIS department really well. Uh And uh, we were a part of a a team that was helping them write that software. And they were great. Part of my whole experience at LCC, these guys would just be like, hey, you're interested, sit down and I'll show you how to do this. Really? So I never took any formal classes here. Uh, It's just as a part of the working in this environment, the... um, yeah, the opportunity was there to learn how to do things. It so, was incredible. So I find this fascinating because colleges are amazing places to learn, and you can learn formally in a classroom where you're paying tuition, you're getting you're getting credits, and 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 working toward a degree. But what what I'm hearing about your experience is your actual student employment, yeah. working with folks in um, administrative services and MIS, which would be what management information Mission systems, services. yeah. 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 Um, that that what turned into a marketable skill for you working with these uh, working oh. with this computer system. Yeah, without question. I mean, the 
I used to tell people, I went on to get two other degrees, and, and you know, I would always get in a conversation about LCC, you know, where is that? Mm-hmm. One of the great things about the school when I was here, and I imagine it's the same now, is that the, the people that were teaching were practitioners. They, right. they did this for a living, mm-hmm. which I think in education I've learned is incredibly important. So right. they were, like in this story, the guy who ran the MIS department, the, he, he was passionate about what he did, and all I had to do was show an interest, and he was like, come on in. So after work, I would spend time there. He would give me a terminal. I would I was writing code, just not really goofing around, just learning. He loved it. And I learned a skill that actually turned into my career. That is so cool. So the coding you did here, um, in, not as part of a class, but as part of your job, we used that software to get things done here yeah. at the college. Get, and, and because um, this is getting to be... Um, you know, it's the principles are the same, but that was like a mainframe uh, system, right? Yep. The, very different than the kind of uh, P- PC environment that people are used to. Talk to me a little bit about what it was like to, you know, write code on one of those dumb terminals and uh, <laughs> actually have something happen. Well, you know, we, we, yeah, it was that was part of the interest. It was fun because, <clears throat> like like you said, we were actually trying to do something. Yeah. So here we were trying to figure out how to optimize the supplies that we had in our warehouse based on what people on the campus need. You know, who ordered canary paper? You know, what department ordered canary color paper versus another one? So so it was an interesting sort of intellectual challenge to write software that helped us figure that out so that we ordered the right amount so we had it on hand to get to the college. And it it wasn't uh it, it was it was more of a experiment. It was fun. We were like, we could make our jobs easier if we just do this. And so it was an incredible, incredible experience. I, I love picturing that. And for and for our, uh, the, the listeners who are younger than me and don't remember this kind of computing, what Rick, what you're talking about is like just characters on a screen, oh, right? Yeah. No pictures, no. no drag and drop. This is before any kind of, you know, Windows or Apple. This is a command line thing yeah. that you're doing, right? You're looking probably at a green screen or an orange screen and, and typing in letters and numbers. Yeah, green green screen terminals on a on a huge machine that sat here on campus. And you're right, it was before, you know, it was before the internet. People, cell phones were around, people still had pagers, you know, it was kind of a, that era in technology. Mm-hmm. So super exciting. And um, you just, a person my age, at that time in my life, wouldn't have had access to that kind of an environment to do something real right. in a mainframe computer. And here it was just sort of like, come on in and do this. I mean, I found it to be, it, w- it was amazing, actually. That, that is something that I think is different for community colleges in a, in a very positive way. I mean, it, a, a student who was showing interest like that at a large, maybe, research university wouldn't have that person sit you in front of a terminal and say, hey, see if you can write some code to, to track that canary paper. Right. That's right. So, so when, you, when, did it, when did it occur to you that these, were more, uh, uh, that these were skills that might allow you to fly in a different way, not flying the cargo, but, but flying you know, in, the, in the software world? You know, I told that story earlier when the friend of mine in California needed help. It was just, hey, I've done this before, so mm-hmm. just get me in front of a terminal and I'll, I'll know exactly so what to do. So tell me about that. What's that first uh, enterprise or, or, or project that you worked on? Uh, it was a sporting goods store uh, in California that uh, they believed that they had some internal theft happening, and they were trying to write a program to see if they could determine what was happening. They had like 72 stores. So... I said to him over lunch, I said, well, listen, everybody has to buy with their employee number and you're going to have all those transactions on your on your mainframe. Mm-hmm. And why don't you go look at those patterns and see what he didn't know how to do that. So he put me in front of a terminal after lunch and said, show me how to do it. Literally, it was 10 lines of code. And out came a report. And it's, it's kind of a bad story, but a good story. They wound up terminating like 10 employees. Okay, so you were able to write some code where they could find out where this loss was happening. That's right. Yeah, I mean, that's a bad story. But the good part of it is that, you know, this technology, this skill allowed this business to solve the problem that it couldn't solve before. That's right. The second part of that, just to be very quick, the second part of that was, hey, we're trying to rewrite some basic algorithms around our inventory management. And I remembered what we were doing here for the office. I said, listen, I've done a little of this before. So I got a week-long project that helped them predict demand and then create, you know, the supply that they needed to in their stores, which for retailers, inventories, everything, right? It's where okay. all their mom. All right. 
but I had done it with pens and papers and all kinds of stuff here, paper clips here on campus. It was the same concept, and uh, just it was total luck, to tell you the truth, that 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 opportunity presented itself, and I'd done a little bit of that here, and it just took off from there. Well, you say luck. I hear what you're saying, but you know, one of the things that you said earlier is that as you were working as a student employee, there were folks who had jobs here at LCC who recognized in you some curiosity, some initiative and drive to the point where they kind of grabbed you and said, hey, work on this. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> that's one of the things I love about Institute. And by the way, stuff like that happens still at LCC. Not everybody who uh, is a teacher or imparts knowledge is necessarily a faculty member in the classroom. That's one of the things I love about our college. We've got great people who do all kinds of teaching. And what I'm hearing you say is there's this sort of informal curriculum or oh, yeah. I mean, something going on where you, where you learned a lot just by being here. There's no question. I mean, we had um, just a couple of names from the past. The, yeah. guy, the guy who ran the flight schools, he was the chief pilot. His name was Tom Krashen. Okay. I'll never forget Tom. He 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 was just a real human being. And the first, you know, when you're when you're new in that environment, you go out to the airport and there's airplanes everywhere. Right. Super welcoming guy, and he was just a role model. And then I come down here and I work in business services, and I get to meet, of course, the folks in the MIS department. But but your predecessor, probably of two or three cycles, mm -hmm. Abel Sykes Jr. Yes, Doctor Sykes, sure. And I was in his office uh, every day, and he would say hello and. Quite often he would, what's going on? How, you know, what what's happening over there? So he was, it was just informal conversations, which I think shape probably helped shape my character more than I really recognized then, uh -huh. but I certainly do now. So it's yeah, you 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 have faculty that's great. You have administration people that you can, you just have access to them in a smaller environment like LCC, and it's uh, it's life changing. I mean, I, it was really important for me. I, I love kid. hearing that. And by the way, I have heard so many stories about Dr. Sykes, and you know he has passed, uh, yep. and and his tenure here as president is getting to be a long time ago, but there's still a lot of great positive memories about a, what a warm and engaging person he was, how positive he was, and of course our. A library building, the Teaching uh, Technology Learning Center, is is named after him. Right. Uh, there's a great picture of him in the in the lobby there. So so LCC people had a big influence on you. Now so you're 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 working information technology. You're you you had your aviation career. You did go on to get other degrees. Where did you where did you study, and what were the other degrees that you earned? I studied computer science at the uh, University of Phoenix, mm -hmm. so another sort of non-traditional sure, kind of sure. uh, university. Primarily online. Yep, yep primarily mm -hmm. online. And then I got my master's degree in software engineering at Golden Gate University, which was literally in a building right next to a building I worked uh, at in San Francisco. So it was perfect. I could work all day and go to school at night. And Well, and that, that activity, I mean, we talk about the dot-com boom. My own sister, who's got an MBA, she, she went out to San Francisco with a buddy who did a startup. There was so much entrepreneurial activity, uh, particularly as you know, the uh, information technology and software boomed, right? So you worked in that uh, sporting goods environment. Tell me a little bit about what where you went from there in, in technology and software. Yeah, most of it, the early days revolved around retail. It was just sort of a, a, a skill I had, a, a domain I understood. Uh -huh. So I worked for a company called Cost Plus World Market. You probably probably have heard of them, no? Uh, Discovery Channel. Oh, uh, okay. I worked for Discovery Channel. We did. We worked in the IT department way back in the early days of Discovery. You could watch a show, and then it would say, hey, "Call one eight hundred Discovery if you want to order the video." Okay. We wrote the software that allowed the the agents to to manage that in, those incoming calls and place the orders and get the videos shipped to your house. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's really kind of that, that's how it started. It just sort of grew from there. The I took my first executive role uh, for Louis Vuitton out of Paris. They have a big division. They had a big division here in the U.S., which eventually we moved to Hong Kong. Okay. That started all my international travels. So I was their CIO, Chief Information Officer. Um, and yeah. so you did that in Hong Kong. Did that in Hong Kong. Okay. And that was and that's that is fashion apparel industry, right? But you. Or, or probably a bigger brand than that, right? Yeah, they, buy, they have about 100 I mean, tag hero watches to Dom Perignon and just about everything in between. Oh, okay. So a huge international enterprise, Big and group. you're chief information officer for them uh, in Asia. Yep. And then you worked in Europe as well. I worked in Europe. After I, after I had come back from Asia, I went to work for a company called Cisco Systems, a huge networking 
uh, the sister company. I mentioned worked for Cisco oh, as she, well. But yeah, definitely. Uh, big, big company. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, and I was running uh, services for them, so professional services, which were generally customers using our technology. We helped them get the most out of it. It's the best way to describe it. Mm-hmm. And they had a pretty big business in Europe, and the president of that group was retiring, so I got a chance to take my family overseas. It was supposed to be a two-year assignment. It turned into seven years, and... My kids wound up going to school. You know, they were sixth grade, I think, when we moved, the, the youngest one. So they went right up through university uh, in Europe. Really? Yeah. All right, so where were you living? What part of Europe? Uh, we lived in Brussels. Okay, yep. in Belgium. All in right. Belgium, yeah. And and then uh, the is it the Blue uh, Planet uh, opportunity that brought you back to the states? No, I came. I was still with Cisco. They mm-hmm. repatriated me back to the states, and mm-hmm. then uh, I met the CEO of a company called Sienna, which is the parent company of Blue Planet. One of the best guys I've ever worked for in my entire career. His name's Gary Smith. He he and I happened to cross paths, and he said, you, you got to come over and do this for me. So so tell me a little bit about Blue Planet. What do you, what do, you do there? Well, it's a, it's a small, small-ish company. We're just about $160 million in revenue. Mm-hmm. Um, we write software for these large carriers around the world, mm-hmm. and, and I run everything from sales to, to R&D. Fantastic, so, fantastic. Yeah. Now, I do have a question for you. Do you when you... You work with so many IT professionals in so many different uh, sectors. Have you have you bumped into other folks who had who got their start or have some kind of connection to community college? Have you have you have you found other folks who benefited from a community college like you have? Yeah, a handful actually. A few that actually came through LCC. Believe it or not, I was at a conference in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. Cisco is, is your sister, probably a huge company. It's a giant company. She she went there. The, uh, a company she worked for was acquired, you know. And yeah, yeah. That happened to a buddy of mine too. So, That's right. so, so you met other LCC folks who were in that Cisco environment. Yeah, I saw somebody at a. T- this is a local story, but his last name was Weber, which most people would pronounce as Weber. And uh-huh. I'm like, you got to be from, you got to be from around Michigan. Uh-huh. Turns out he went here. He went to school in Portland, just up the street from where I live. So, yeah, I'd met a number of people, and we. I had a office in Austin, Texas, for a while, and. I bet half of our staff was going to a community college in Austin. It was just a really popular place for kids to come out of high school and learn a trade like software. Mm-hmm. You know, they, they they viewed it as sort of a, a, a technical kind of path versus an academic path. And um, I, I had a number of employees out of a community college there. Yeah, ACC is a good school. Yeah. And Austin is a cool town. It's a cool town. Well, so so your your LCC experience has taken you all over the world. Is are there other are there other memories about being here uh, that you'd like to share? I know um, as a as a student employee. Uh, one of the perks was actually having a place to park, park right? Yeah. <laughs> tell me, tell me about what it was like to be a student here in the in the late '80s. Yeah, you know, in the '80 80, '89 coming down here, uh, I think the Gannon parking garage was just built. It was somewhere 76. around. Yeah, it was built in '76, so it was relatively new. And everything else was street parking, mm-hmm. and there was a garage just up here on Capitol, but mm-hmm. it was always full. It was all the local businesses filled it and up, and all the state employees and everything. Yeah, it was a very busy time. Yeah, and so as a as a student coming down here. Uh, um, if you didn't have a little, I'll never forget it. It was a little green parking pass that said LCC on it. You had to pay for parking. And it wasn't, you know, for, for a kid, that wasn't trivial. Right. So when I got my, when I, I started as a student aid employee here, and then I got hired as a part-time, and they handed me that parking pass, I remember thinking, oh, this is life-changing. Special. You know? <laughs> it's, but you're special. I'm going to have you a spot park. I can park in. And yeah, it was uh, it was fun. And it was just a great environment to be to be down here. I love being downtown. Yeah, yeah, I do too. I really do. So tell me, were the, it sounds like you were busy, so maybe you weren't able to take part in many activities, but were there uh, you know, extracurricular or outside of class activities you were able to uh, take part in, or were you always uh, heading out to the airport to get yeah. uh, flight time? No, I was always headed to the airport after, after work, but I think one of the things I really loved about LCC was a big part of my social sort of experience as a kid was right here mm-hmm. in town. Uh, we talked about Dr. Sykes. I mean, he and I used to wind up in the gym together. Run. There was a there was this tiny lap in this gym, uh-huh. uh, and we wound up there before I'd go out to the campus. We just worked out on the same days. So I don't know. I just had a great. There were so many people here that I knew that this was sort of my social world. Working was out in the campus. Like uh-huh. I was. I was out all the time. So yeah, night nighttime with school and 
daytime was here, going to lunch with people and hanging out with people on campus. It was just something I'll never forget. It right. was a fantastic experience. And coming from Fowler, Lansing's sort of the big city. It right? was. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Exactly. <laughs> it was. And then, and then the world got a lot bigger for you, right? I mean, bigger. when you talk about all the places you've lived, all the experiences you've had, uh, LCC's taken you a lot of different places. Yeah, I'm, <clears throat> I'm super proud of uh, what I accomplished here because it was more than – you know, I got a two-year degree in aviation flight technology, but, um, you know, I, at that time I knew all the board members of the school because I delivered their board packets. You know, this was before email. Yeah. So I would have coffee with them in their house when I would deliver their packets. So back then it, it didn't dawn on me, but the kind of exposure that I had was something that was really, really special. And as I lived in different places around the world, like you said, a small little farming community to the big city of Lansing, mm -hmm. and then I'm in Hong Kong and Sydney, Australia, and London. I felt like I was ready for that. Like it was, uh, I was confident when I left here. That's probably the most important thing because people treated me like I mattered. And uh, that was super important. Well, you did matter and you still do. And, and it's, it's really inspiring to hear about the things that you learned as a student employee. I mean, what you learned in your degree was important. But one of my big takeaways from our conversation is just by uh, working with folks who took an interest in you and were uh, confident in your ability to solve problems, that those were the skills that were that led you to your further degrees and 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 landed you in the corner office CEO uh, yeah. role uh, for for a big tech firm. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, Rick, I've really enjoyed our conversation. Thank you so much for coming on the show and all the best in your future endeavors, wherever um, your skills take you flying in the future. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thanks for having me. It's been fun. Yeah. LCC Alumni Stories is recorded, engineered, and produced by me, Steve Robinson, on LCC's downtown campus. The soundtrack, Who Told You, is licensed through DeWolf Music and was performed by Ian McCanty. Thanks for listening. Learn more about what our alumni have been up to at lccconnect.org. And if you're an LCC alum and want to share your story, send me an email at steve.robinson at lcc.edu. Until next time, keep learning. This is LCC Connect on WLNZ 89.7 FM.